I honestly think the Sony FX30 is one of the most underrated cameras right now, and I know exactly why people are sleeping on it. You guys are all caught up in this full frame nonsense. Some of the best movies of all time were shot on Super 35. Stop hating on APS-C. The FX30 is one of the cheapest cinema cameras you can buy right now, and I'm gonna call it a cinema camera. You know why? Because you can make cinema with it. If you can make movies, you can make commercials, whatever you want with this camera, in my opinion, it's a cinema camera. Fight all you want in the comments, I do not give a shit. I've been quietly, well, as quietly as uploading a video is, I've been putting up videos with the FX30 for almost a year now, and honestly, some of the best work that I've done in this past year has been with this camera. So I'm not sure why there seems to be this criticism of Super 35 or this criticism of the sensor itself. Some people are like, oh, it's terrible in low light. The ISO 2500 is too noisy. I shot a short film called Prepaid, maybe you saw it, entirely on the FX30. And I am so happy with how the footage looks in this short film. I use the Suray Nightwalkers, which I wanna talk about more in this video. But you know what the kicker is? I didn't use any lights in this short film. In fact, the only light that I used was a flashlight. I had it pointed at the door inside the car so you could just see my face a little bit. Granted, this is a dark short film. I wanted it to look dark, but it is clean. The shadows are clean and it looks crispy. I don't know what you're shooting that you'd be any darker than this. The only thing lighting this entire short film was a flashlight and a street light. So unless you're National Geographic and you're shooting dolphins at night underwater, what the hell do you need ISO 12,800 for? Then you're gonna argue, well, Patrick, you just made a video about the creator on your main channel and they used ISO 12,800. They were making something that was sort of like a National Geographic documentary. So if you are just running gunning and you wanna go crazy and shoot in moonlight, by all means, blow the money on an FX3. But if you have a tube light or a COB light or a flashlight or a street light, the FX30 is an extremely capable camera with a beautiful image. An image that looks even better when you pair it with some really nice glass like the Suray Nightwalkers. And of all these budget cinema lenses that I've had my hands on, this is the first one that actually feels professional, something that I would be comfortable bringing on a commercial set. They're also T1.2, so any of your low light worries are out the window with this lens. Sure, you don't always wanna stop down, but if you do stop down, this thing is giving your sensor a ton of light. And the bokeh is delicious on these lenses. I used all three lenses in prepaid and the versatility of having all three focal lengths was invaluable. I think they are the perfect combination of glass for the FX30 and they excite me. They are a fun side of lenses to use. They're not too clinical, they're not too sharp. They have a vintage feel to them. They remind me a lot of when I used to shoot with Canon FDs. And the fact that they're T1.2 is just icing on the cake. And it looks like they're also coming out with autofocus versions called snipers. Curious about those, maybe I'll get my hands on them, but I'm okay with manual focus. I have a little follow focus system that I use with it. But it's just incredible for the price of these lenses, the build quality and the image that you get out of it is fantastic. Just like the FX30, which I still can't believe is under $2,000. It's got everything that you want from the FX3 in a Super 35 body. I don't know why people aren't rushing out to buy this camera like crazy. Stop getting sucked into the full frame nonsense. I shoot a lot of full frame. I have an a7 IV and I play with the Lumix S5 II a lot, but I still keep coming back to this FX30. I love the body on this camera. On my trip to Japan last year, I had this camera with me and I was using it like a video street photography camera. It was like a cinema street photography camera. I would run around like a little mirrorless, like I had a rangefinder Leica or something like that. And I would shoot scenes. I would shoot little clips of things happening in the city. And then if I wanted to, I would just extract images from those scenes. So I got two birds with one stone. I got all these really great clips. You've probably seen my Japan trip video with the FX30, but I also got great photos out of this camera too. I like that you can strip it down to absolutely nothing and then also turn it into a full-fledged cinema camera with just a couple accessories. When I rig this thing up, I pretty much deck it out in small rig stuff. I've got the cage, I've got the rails, I've got the battery. They've really made everything that makes this camera work for professional productions. But that's not to say it doesn't work without that stuff. It just makes your life a little bit easier when you have the cage and the handle and you've got this wicked V-mount battery on it. All these accessories just make a fantastic camera a damn near perfect camera. I'm really trying to nitpick this camera right now and just for the money and the price of it, there's nothing that I can say that's bad about this camera. I'm trying to literally think about something that's bothered me with the FX30 and nothing is coming to mind. But this camera locks on autofocus if you need it. It's also a great cinema camera. And if you deck it out with a bunch of accessories, it is a full-fledged feature filmmaking production camera. And it even makes Blackmagic cameras seem 
expensive. So stop sleeping on the FX30. This thing's probably not even due for an upgrade for like another two or three years, if that. This is the type of camera I would recommend to an amateur, someone who's just starting out, your first cinema camera, your first camera, all the way up to seasoned professionals, DPs making films and commercials. I've been on real sets with this camera and no one bats an eye at it. What is there to complain about? Don't watch these noise tests and side-by-sides with the FX3. You guys know I hate camera comparisons because I think it's stupid. No one's gonna watch the thing that you made shot by another camera the exact same way and pixel peep which one looks different. So stop worrying about it. You can't buy a bad camera right now and there is no way in hell the FX30 is a bad camera. Pair it with a nice set of lenses like the Sur-8 Nightwalkers or throw a Sigma 18 to 35 on it and you are golden. Get some cool accessories from Small Rig. Links in the description. It helps me make more videos like this. Otherwise, if you've got any questions, let me know. We'll chat in the comments about it. Other than that, my name is Patrick, and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.